You can see few actual images of CT scan brain of a 64 year old man. His history is withheld now. Please go through the images and think about the findings and possible differential diagnosis and then you can assume the final diagnosis. The CT findings are commonly seen each and every day by most of the radiologists and the neurologist. The images are enough for the diagnosis. If you want more time, please pause the video and go back and see the images again. Are you ready? Let's go. We can see well-defined wedge-shaped hypodensity in the left basal ganglionic region extending to the left corona radiata and the left cerebral hemisphere sparing the gray matter. It's easy to see the dilatation of the left lateral ventricle, left sylvian cistern and less of the left cortical sulci. With closer look, you can notice hypodensity in the left cerebral peduncle of the midbrain and also in the adjacent pons with prominence of left ambient cistern and of the left cerebellopontine cistern. The CPA cistern is more prominent on the left side in comparison to the right side. So the differential diagnosis is given without the clinical background. It can be either old infarct or it can be valerian degeneration or it can be amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Now I am giving the history. The patient had been admitted in our hospital one year back due to left ganglionic hemorrhagic infarct. The patient was there for a week and then discharged and then went for native medicine and lost for follow-up. The patient readmitted here with altered sensorium. CT was done to rule out intracranial hemorrhages. So the final diagnosis is valerian degeneration in the background of gliotic changes in the left basal ganglia. I am going to discuss about the central type of valerian degeneration is due to the cerebral injury. Valerian degeneration is a process of progressive demyelination and disintegration of the distal axonal segment following axonal transection. Here supratentorial corticospinal tract is injured and hence the descending corticospinal tract and the corticobulbar tracts in the brainstem go for lysis and degeneration. The causes are given, it's more commonly due to MCA infarct which can be either hemorrhagic or ischemic and less commonly it can be due to trauma or tumors or it can be due to demyelination. If you are interested in the stages of valerian degeneration, please pause the video and read and reassess the importance of radiopathological correlation. We can detect valerian degeneration only in the late stage two in the routine MRI after one to two months. I am now giving the radiological findings in the valerian degeneration in the brainstem after MCA infarct. Here the findings are given using the T1 and T2 weighted images. Findings about T2 weighted images are correspondent to the same as flare and proton density images. In the initial period, enthusiastic residents might interpret these as ischemic changes or as infarcts in the brainstem in MRI. In the past few years, MRI is the keystone for the early detection of valerian degeneration with presence of diffusion weighted images, diffusion tensor images. It's documented that diffusion weighted uh, image detects one fourth of valerian degeneration after four days and uh, diffusion tensor imaging detects almost two fourths of valerian degeneration after four days and sometimes earlier also. Earlier detection of valerian degeneration gives prediction of poor motor outcome and hence the therapeutic strategies and neuroprotection might be changed for early rehabilitation. So now in this background, most of the radiologists are tuned to detect valerian degeneration even in CT brain in the late stage 3, I'm saying after six months to one year with atrophic changes in the brainstem. Thanks a lot.